All right, what's up, guys? Welcome to One More Step, the Anxious Athlete Podcast. My name is Elliot Kettle, and thank you so much for tuning in. In this episode, I have Kevin Noonan on the podcast. He is a good friend of mine, someone who I went to um, high school with and is now playing um, soccer at the University of Dubuque in Iowa in the United States. He's also an education major there. We get into a variety of topics um, covering his life, covering uh, soccer, and some of the memories and his background in the sport. Um, Yeah, and without further ado, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode with Kevin. Side note, check out Kevin's podcast, Full 90 with the Fellas, on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts as well. So, now, enjoy this episode. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, what's up? <laughs> Kevin Noonan. I was I, not expecting to see the uh, the shaved head. That caught me off guard big time. Wow. When did, you, uh, when did that occur? Um, well, I've been losing it for a while, but recently just decided, I think like beginning of quarantine, I, I thought oh. I had corona one day. Okay. So, but I was like, you know what? One thing led to another, so I was like, fuck it, let's shave that. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that is a a story for sure. Um, (laughs) but definitely, uh, definitely a massive, thank you. A massive, um, shout out to you for doing this. I'm, I'm, uh, I'll have to slip you some, slip you some money at some point for, uh, for doing this. (laughs) this, I appreciate it. As I say to everyone is so grateful for anyone who wants to come on and kind of share their, their stories, share what they've, what they've been up to, uh, um during all this so i like your setup i think you might have the best setup so far to be honest with the thank you appreciate it the background i like it um but yeah so if you're ready i mean uh we can just hop right into it yeah yeah um yeah so how i like to start with most people is just kind of some real basic information your name your age and then where you're from uh well i'm kevin noonan um i'm 21 years old and uh, I'm from Wheaton, Illinois, but I'm currently studying uh, education and playing soccer at the University of Dubuque in Dubuque, Iowa. Very nice. And the next place that I usually go is kind of ask the, uh, the guests how we, how we met, which I think was in high school. I don't think it was prior to that, was it? I mean, I don't know if you have any thoughts. I, I, well, I, I knew of you. I mean, we lived close by. Yeah, I, was, right. I, knew, I knew Noah growing up, and um, I think high school was really when – you and I started to meet and go in the South and playing. I vaguely, didn't you play Copian for a year too? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Like the, yeah. for those who are, who are unaware of what Copian is like a little, a little club in kind of our little suburb of Chicago. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I did as well. What, how long did you play Copian for? We'll get into it as I, as I move forward, but how long did you play for? I played for um, four years. So starting my freshman year of high school and I played all four years of high school, which oh. I think my freshman year then was your, year that you played for right COVID. yeah exactly yeah I, th- I, c- I always remember or I always can't quite remember when I played because it was like I played at one point and then went to a club or, or two uh, that was different and then I came back like I think I came back to coping my senior year uh, of high school it was it was mm-hmm. strange but um yeah and then the the other thing that I, I kind of like to ask people obviously with all the craziness that's going on uh is how you're how your lockdown it has been? How is how have you been spending that? It's it's been all right. Um, it's been nice to have my roommates. Uh, I turned twenty one on April sixteenth, so oh, that was okay. definitely a, it was a different way to spend your twenty first. But twenty first to remember, yeah, yeah. My roommates made it fun. It's still a lot of fun. Um, but I'd say mostly just. I mean, I've watched probably fifty rerun soccer games, like United yeah. Wigan Athletic in two thousand seven sure. stuff like. 
but uh, it's just, I don't know, kind of finding things to do here and there. Um, recently, some of my friends and I have been playing basketball. We'll just go to a park and play basketball. Yeah. Stuff like that. But yeah, uh, it's been obviously frustrating, especially when it all broke out where it was still kind of cold out. You really couldn't do much. You had to sure. stay inside. But um, overall, I don't know. I, I, I kind of do well with just hanging out and, I don't know, finding ways inside to occupy my time. We've done two puzzles. That have turned out very well. Yeah, but. absolutely. Puzzles have, have certainly been, I haven't done one myself, but every time I'm on a call with my parents back home, they show me the puzzles that they're doing. And it's always some extravagant one of, I think they've done, the most recent one they did was the City of London. They they did the puzzle and it was like some kind of 3D, 4D type thing that was going on. And I was, I was completely confused. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it's been, that's one way people have been spending it for sure. Yeah, yeah, and it's, I mean, it's tough, but it's fun. I know, yeah. I and as cheap as you thought, to, as you'd think, too. Yeah. I, know they are. I was going to say as well, that's, that's, a, that's a really good point as well, because I've done, I bought one when I was at, at school, um, and when I was looking on Amazon, yeah, I was, I was completely caught off guard with how, how expensive yeah. some of them got. Some of them were, yeah. were up there. Um, yeah. But yeah, and then, so obviously you just mentioned University of Dubuque is where, or is it University of Dubuque or Dubuque University? Is that the, is, what's the uh, correct way? U University of Dubuque. Okay, perfect. And, yeah. and obviously Dubuque, Iowa. What has the lockdown situation been out in Iowa? Has it been, have you noticed anything different from what you're seeing on the news in different other, other areas of the world or in the U.S.? Yeah, I will say it's almost night and day difference compared to when, like, my mom would text me and Snapchat me from Illinois. Sure. Because She'll Snapchat me like Butterfield Road, just completely empty, empty. just looking for Butterfield. And like out here, maybe the first month or two, you felt like it was a little weird. Like people were in stores wearing masks and doing all that stuff. But right. now, um, bars are reopening, um, restaurants really? reopened. Yeah, it's pretty chill out here now. I mean, there really isn't much of a concern, which is a problem considering Iowa has one of the fastest rates of like spread of the coronavirus. Really? Right wow. Now. Yeah. So it is, it is um, something a little scary, but right now I think just with um, just getting the account, the economy back going, I think yeah. that's why a lot of people are just, they decided to make the switch to just start going back and doing things. Um, yeah. Yeah. So all you can really hope for at this point is that people stay healthy and safe and take the necessary precautions but yeah. again it's tough especially like at bars things like that when exactly you know, yeah when like you said i'm sure that as things kind of begin to reopen over there over here in the world in general that i think and i've had discussions with multiple people about it um people may be relaxing a little bit as time goes on as kind of nor you know some some form of uh normality does return as that goes on for the weeks and months people probably starting to kind of migrate closer together and maybe not following the guidelines so as you said it's just a waiting game to see what what that means for the 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 future before um we get a vaccine or better treatment or something but yeah it's a obviously a crazy time a crazy um crazy crazy to be alive right now you know i think it'll be something that we probably all look back and think man i was turning 21 when that happened i had just moved over to london when that happened uh, you know i think that we'll remember absolutely the this year and and definitely where we were when it all began Plus the, and the crazy thing is too is that i mean i'm in iowa and you're in london and we're both experiencing it too absolutely it's, that is a hundred percent it's, a, it's yeah. a global scale but i mean as sad as it is it is almost nice that it brings the whole world together in a common you know absolutely i, I think that that's out. yeah i was just i just got off the phone with um my mom it's her birthday today shout out to her happy birthday probably happy won't birthday. watch it but <laughs> i'm putting it out there anyways um mm -hmm. and so yeah we were just talking about how i think again it's it's a terrible thing that has gone on i don't want to frame it as this great thing at all but i think there are so many little silver linings like you said yeah. it brings us all together i think um it will be something that that metaphorically literally if you if you were not it's something like the saying or how the saying goes i'm tripping over my words here but if uh what doesn't kill you makes you stronger kind of in a mm -hmm. literal sense and a metaphor in, in a metaphorical sense as well and i hope that again we'll 
before we didn't have any kind of alert system or, or you know, precautionary measures to deal with a pandemic uh, mm -hmm. to this scale, to a worldwide scale, like you put it. Yeah. And so hopefully now going forward, maybe we'll be a bit better prepared for the next virus that comes along and, and we yeah. can, you know, not have to go into a, gl a global lockdown. Um, yeah. But yeah, so kind of, it also no, no, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I think it also makes people uh, a little more grateful for the lives they had, considering I'd say Absolutely. a lot of people a year ago or nine months ago would probably, you know, you have, everybody has something to complain about at any given time. Even I mean, myself, I do that from time to time. But I think the past like three months have really showed us that, hey, life isn't too bad outside of quarantine. Absolutely. I think that's, that's so true. And I think that, um, it's something where I, I think people will have had, because people have had to be uh, a little more creative and not had the, you know, the general life, or not been able to experience the just general life basic experiences. Um, over here, a lot of public transport is, is used, for example, and just being able to get on a bus, on a train, on a, you know, subway is like something that I hope people, and I think, just naturally people will be a little bit more grateful for mm -hmm. just to Absolutely. do those things just to just to like you said go to a bar just to uh, down the line you know go out to eat and be close with one another one yeah. another i mean i <laughs> think that that's so true sorry see your grandparents absolutely so absolutely i mean it's something that will I think it can't not, if that's the it's a double negative, I know, but it can't not make, make people or make us more grateful in my mind or more, more, more positive society. Like you said, to, to hopefully it allows us to see, you know, things are, things are okay. Things are not mm -hmm. as bad as, as the media or, or, or people say it is um, outside of quarantine, outside of lockdown. I, I think that yeah. hopefully it'll, it'll, open up the eyes of, of people in that regard mm -hmm. um yeah it's just a it, it's interesting to think about all the um all the things it will you know maybe change and the slight changes that uh that it'll bring about and hopefully in the in a lot of positive ways as we've just discussed yeah. but um yeah. yeah so if you're ready again i kind of the next topic i usually go in with with people is the is the soccer one is uh yeah. just kind of just delving into that and first kind of um get in a little bit about your story and maybe right from the beginning what your some of your first memories were some of the um what you remember about your start in the game uh was your family big into it just all kinds of things like that yeah um so i'd say i started with uh you know just doing in-house wheaton park district soccer um, sure. it was always my favorite sport and my family was never a big soccer family Mm -hmm. um, I just think it was one of those things, you know, a lot of kids do when they're younger. Sure. And I picked it up from a young age. And I, I think what was tough for me was around third or fourth grade, because I think I started my first year of Wheat and Wings in fifth grade. Sure. Um, they, I, Wheat and Wings, uh, I don't know, I tried out for them two years in a row and uh, got not cut, but they didn't have a team for okay. my age for two years. So I was always really upset about it. And then finally in fifth grade, they had a team for uh, my age group sure. and started playing there. I think I played there for two years. Um, was a f out and out striker when I was playing there, which I think is funny considering really? I was about the day. Yeah, considering right now I can, I'm five foot eight and <laughs> 150 pounds. I'm not playing sure. striker in yeah. the three soccer game. That's, that's not happening. Yeah. But, um, yeah, then after that, uh, seventh and eighth grade played for Glen Allen Lakers. Uh, I think it was a little tough for me because at the time I had to make a choice between uh, baseball and soccer. Sure. Which uh, I haven't played baseball since, but it's one of those things that when I get the opportunity opportunity to just go play catch or, you know, go to sure. batting, I do miss it a lot. However, um, I 100% do not regret the decision. And uh Went on to play soccer. So I did two years then with uh, Glen Allen Lakers for seventh and eighth grade. Okay, cool. And then um, after that, uh, high school started. So that's when I started playing uh, Copian. And I was doing – did freshman A, JV1, and then two years on varsity for Wheat World South. Excellent. And yeah. then, yeah, four years of Copian. And during that, too, I was also running track and field at uh, South to kind right. of stay yeah. in shape. 
and get, uh, you know, a little bit of extra training. But, um, yeah, I mean, my soccer, I, I don't think I ever started it out. And my parents didn't – I don't think they saw me going on to play college soccer. And yeah. I don't think I actually ever saw that either. Yeah. I think until the day I committed to UD, um, I was pretty much set on going to um, – University of Missouri that's where my brother went um okay. and I remember like a week before I was scheduled to have an overnight here um I had just toured University of Missouri um was ready to kind of tell our coach here like hey coach I, I thank you very much for the offers and the interest but uh, I think I'm gonna go to Mizzou um and then I ended up doing the overnight here and uh absolutely loved it um and kind of figured, hey, I'll do a year if I don't, if it, you know, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I can always move, but we'll see how it goes. Right. Uh, and ever since then, it, I, I honest to God, I think it was one of the best choices of my life because um, I think a big part about soccer that maybe, you know, other sports I don't feel is as strong, but um, soccer is so much of a sport that comes with a whole life experience where I do think that, um, at every step along the way in your soccer career, you learn new things about life. Absolutely. Um, and I think that college was a big part of that. Uh, for me, I lived with two kids who grew up in Germany on a military base. One of them's half German. Wow. We had over, I, I think I've played with over 10 Swedish kids. Um, we have, I, I forgot how many kids from how many different countries in our team that have played for our program. But uh, I've been blessed with, to play with kids from all over the world, kids from uh, Africa, one who uh, was our neighbor across the hall freshman year, could speak like seven different languages. Wow, uh, that's incredible. Shout yeah. out, bienvenue. Yeah, he was, uh, he was a cool kid. But uh, it's just been crazy. I've been really blessed to play with um, kids from all over the world in college. But I think that overall, just in, in the beginning, I've been blessed to play soccer with a lot of cool people and just throughout – uh, my whole career gotten to learn a lot from a lot of different people no absolutely, absolutely. That's, that's that's I think a really interesting uh point that you make because um I think it is one of those things where no matter where you're playing on earth you're probably going to you you can you can have a different experience from town to town from college to college from you know your different youth clubs it's like you do. And I think it's, it's because each, you know, each player, each coach, each team has a different style, you know, has a different kind of uh, way of doing things. And like you said, you get, you get kind of those life experiences. I mean, to be able to live with the people that, that you have and play with the people that you have is, um, you know, quite unique. I mean, I, I would say at, at, for someone, you know, your age as well. I mean, for someone that's our age and to, uh have those experiences with people from a uh, from different countries and from outside the US i think is is pretty unique and a lot of that is through the sport of soccer i mean it just just yeah. plain and simple and um yeah that's a really interesting a really interesting point that you make um about how it's different than than other sports and um something that i wholeheartedly agree with um the next kind of topic that i wanted to ask and you touched on it a little bit is um, as a youth player, kind of moving into high school, what were, I know you, you mentioned your position a little bit, but what were kind of like your, what was your, I guess, style or your ideas of, about the game? Uh, I think growing up, and part of it is, and I think everyone at times is a victim to it, is you see the Ronaldo highlight tapes, you see the Messi <laughs> highlight tapes, and you go Absolutely. like, oh, yeah, I think I got I to gotta be that. Yeah. Um, I think that as time changed, first off, uh, my guy was always Marco Royce. Love Marco Royce. From right. Jersey. Okay. Um, but I think over time, uh, you start to realize how all those highlight tapes are, first off, either completely out of context and you can't just do just skill moves randomly. 100%. Um, but also you realize that it's so much more built around once you start watching and, and, and understanding the overall team tactic, it gets easier. Sure. Uh, and so how that kind of changed for me was I think that in like middle school going into high school um, a lot of it was just you know seeing those moves seeing stuff like that and trying to be as uh, creative and I, I do think that I was always kind of a team player sure. uh, I, I, I for the most part um, 
understood the concept of passing, I will say, better than I feel like some kids <laughs> my age. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Yeah, but uh, it's one of those things where I, I think that, um, you know, as I went on to high school, you have coaches who are it's, – it's a lot more structured, it's more team-oriented, and you kind of figure out that um, – I used to be a pure winger, um, always played on the left wing or striker pretty much my whole career, but uh, middle school was mainly on the wing. And then uh, in high school, freshman year, I played wing, a um, little bit sophomore year, but then junior, senior year is when I kind of started to switch to outside back, which is what I'm playing now. And that started in club, and I think how that went was uh, I, I was always pretty pacey, especially when I was in track and field. I got pretty sure. quick. Right. Um, and I just think offensively, um, I don't know what it was, but I just I, – I, I didn't really have that – especially in high school, I just kind of I, – I, I lost – especially when I started playing winger in high school, I think for a while I was too one-dimensional and I was just – kick and run and you know yeah sprint whereas when I would play outside back I found that it put me in situations where I I didn't have to worry about dribbling as much in that I learned that a lot of my dribbling uh would be in tight spaces not as often I would just need to if I ever had to I could just get myself out of a quick tight you know space and then go on and play the ball whether it be uh you know a pass down the line a long ball but it put me in more positions to use um my passing, which has always been, I think, one of my stronger suits. Um, sure. And uh, I, especially considering I do feel like I'm a pretty good two-footed per, a two-footed player. Sure. So uh, I'm playing outside back, especially left back, uh, gave me the opportunity to use both uh, feet. And I think that uh, it just suited me better because it was a much – I didn't have to worry about And when I was playing winger a lot of the time, I was always worried about, like, just go. You know, like, like do a skill sure. move, you know, kick it down the line and – I think over time I started to see more of the team side of the game and how to facilitate other players being the ones to make those big things happen. Sure. Um, well, also I think that I was always pretty, uh, def- uh, you know, defense wise, pretty um, calm. I-, I never, I've never really been one to just dive in. Um, sure. I think that overall I'm just, I'm, I'm solid by reading the game. It's not, I'm not, Again, I'm not a big guy. I'm not anything like that. So I'm more going to be the one who has to read, you know, the body movement, stuff like that, sure. versus coming in and smashing somebody up. Um, sure. But I think that, you know, switching to left back uh, really helped me um, kind of learn a new side of the game, uh, yeah. especially considering, you know, when you're younger too, um, I think everybody wants to be the one scoring goals. And wants yeah, to know. often, yeah, that's what they say. They're like the 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 coach's son, or the you know, the, they always look at the the top player as like the the forward who's you know, if they're right footed, like on the right the right forward who uh, uh, is scoring all the goals. And yeah, it's I know it's definitely something that you get in the states. I'm sure over here, I don't know as much over here, but it's uh, about the, the youth game so much, but mm-hmm. I definitely in the states, I know that that was a part of my upbringing uh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, um, I don't know, just as I learned, I think that uh, you, you do start to get that better grasp, the grasp that is not really, a, it's more of a team oriented sport where rather as a kid, I, I definitely think just the, the environment you're in and how you learn is based around, you know, how can I be the star of the show? But, sure. Yeah. yeah, I think that, that that's true. And it's interesting. I was just going to say as well. Um, well, are you, for, before I get into it, are you, are you right-footed naturally or? Yeah. yeah I naturally were, right-footed, yeah, right. but um, yeah, my left foot's always and it's decent. It's, yeah, like you said, two-footed. And well, I think the interesting thing as well about outside back, and, and I'm sure you found it as well, is that um, you probably have a little more uh, offensively and going forward playing out of the back, you probably have a little bit more, um, time than you do on the wings to to kind of uh, find a pass whether you said like it's down the line or it's inside to uh, you know the the holding midfielder or you know um, into the the forwards feet and um, you can utilize like you said that uh, not only your dribbling ability but you can utilize the passing as well and for someone like you said who understands that that's uh, a greater part of the game or something that's going to be more effective the passing um, yeah. especially at that at that spot I think uh, is important to, to recognize and um, just interesting to hear hear you say that um, in terms of when you were at 
uh, at South, when you were at Wheaton, Wheaton Warmville South, um, I don't know if you just want to talk about maybe um, some of some memories that stuck out there, some what you thought of, and you don't have to, if you're going to blast him, you don't have to, to blast him too hard, but uh, Coach Calipari, um, mm -hmm. and because uh, who knows whether he's watching it. I just had, uh, do you remember, do you remember uh, Luis? Cruz. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. just had I just had him. He was I just I think I, I uploaded his and he uh, he was talking about uh, Coach Calipari a little bit as and we were uh, we weren't being careful. We were just talking about how may, wondering if he was going to watch it or not. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know if you have any specific memories that you want to talk about from South. Yeah, uh, I think South overall was a very good. I, I guess I'll start kind of year by year, uh, sure. coach by coach. Uh, coach Lucky, I think, was one of. Uh, he was the first coach I had at South for freshman A, and um, he was phenomenal in the sense that um, you could tell just how he, uh, how much he really cared about uh, his athletes and his players. Um, and I think at the freshman level, it's not as serious because again, it's the freshman level. Even even if you're freshman A, it's how many of those kids are honestly going to go on and continue to play. All yeah. Time. So yeah. So I mean, it was it was a great experience. Um, he definitely helped. Um, keep us motivated um he, you know really kept us interested in soccer um my sophomore year coach Saj with JV1 was uh he was one of I think the one of my favorite coaches I've ever had for the sense that he was very um stern in a way but it, sure. but it, the way where you knew it was not just like some guy being you know just just being you, you wouldn't yell just to yell it was yeah very, just for the sake very, of yelling yeah it was for yeah. for a reason yeah, and and you knew, and he had his expectations, and you knew what they were. But um, everyone was on board with the overall team sure. um, goal, and he made every player feel important, which was always good. That's important um, for sure. And my two years under Calipari, I thought that Calipari did a great job of you know really getting a group of guys uh, from all different backgrounds and all different um, you know friend groups, different family lives, stuff like that. Sure. And he got a lot of people to, you know, join on the same team and just play together, which is not an easy task, uh, especially, you know, different age groups. I think my junior year was um, an interesting one because not only did you have – I mean, I don't think we had any sophomores on the team at the time, for, except for Clyde White. He was, I think, the only sophomore. Okay. Um, but, I mean, you had a guy like Clyde, who's a sophomore, playing with then guys like Danny Jimenez, Mark Christos. Right, who yeah. At the time, who, I mean, we had completely a lot of different personalities. You know, you have Danny Jimenez, Jose Alfaro, who are just naturally just very outgoing and, like, funny guys. Mm -hmm. And you have guys like Charlie Kirby, who, you know, you know, great guy, really nice and funny kid at times. Yeah. But also, pitch can be very um, serious. Yeah. So Coach Calipari, I think, did a great job of getting everybody to try and, you know, play together, which is not an easy task. Um, I think my senior year then, he was given a team where the most of us had played with each other um, and most of us knew each other pretty well. Um, I know when Noah came in, I think that was Noah's first year playing high yeah. school. Yeah, you know, you've just reminded me that he even played. I, I, can't, I couldn't even I, – mm -hmm. I don't know why wasn't he, I was think, wasn't even thinking about Noah playing, but – uh, yeah, I think that might have, yeah, maybe that was the first year he came in. Yeah, so when he came in, uh, it was it was interesting because it didn't feel like, uh, you know, he it still felt like having somebody who had played with us for a while. Even though he had never played high school with us, um, he did fit right in the team very well with just, you know, me, uh, Charlie Kirby, you know, Adam Kelly, like just personality-wise, uh, everybody in the team was very uh, accepting of him. He came in, sure. uh, helped improve the team, brought his experience in. Um, and then plus that year, I do think we had a younger team. We had uh, Sumani Husseini, who was a, so was a, a sophomore at the time. He plays at UD with me. Oh, uh, really? Okay. Yeah, his uh, cousin Unla also was, I think, a junior at the time. So but I think we had more juniors that year than seniors um, by a lot. But I think just that year, our team clicked overall very well together. And somehow we would crap out, like, 0-0 zero, zero games against, like, all the Naperville schools and then somehow <laughs> beat them in overtime. Like, yeah. I don't know, score some scrappy goal and get, like, a 1-0 win in overtime. Sure. Uh, but it did just – I don't know. <clears throat> that season really did have a lot of uh, – just camaraderie in the team because for whatever reason we were all just really enjoying it and it was one of those things that I think on the last game um 
it's common to see people cry, especially because they know that's their last, uh, right. sometimes that's their last competitive game. I don't think any of us were really crying, not because we weren't sad, but it's just one of those things where it's like, I mean, damn guys, we had a good time. Yeah. It's like, I really say, I mean, it was a guy, it was a group of guys who just really enjoyed going out and playing with each other. And yeah, we were sad that that wasn't going to happen anymore, but it was like, damn, this was a really good time. And I think overall, we just took the experience out of it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, and sometimes I think that's that's almost the the most important thing is to, and definitely my memories of of um, high school and playing uh, on the team and with Calipari and stuff like that were just just the experiences of it. I think sometimes just how much I enjoyed the matches or the training sessions, walking down the you know the little path uh, with a bag of balls over my shoulder, um, you know, training every day. I think it was just. Um, just good memories. I mean, th th like you said, I mean, just always the group of guys that we had, I felt like was um, one that was brought together by by Coach Calipari, as well as, um, yeah, just just found a, a way to get results, like you said. And uh, I think, yeah, just to go back to your, your, your point about how Coach kind of brought people together I think that that's so accurate. I mean, just, just by the, whether it was the pasta dinners or it was the outside of, you know, soccer stuff that he would, he would focus on sometimes to, in a way, help us, help develop us on, on the pitch or on the field. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> excuse me. But yeah, so he's, yeah, I, I, I think for me, it was always a good experience and I'm glad for you yeah. as well. Go ahead. I think that Cal also, I, I, a strong suit of his was, uh, you can tell how much he loves the game of soccer. I mean, even when I've gone back to South and uh, talked with him just in recent years about, even since I've graduated, we've just talked. Um, and even down to being a part of like the UD, or the Wheat Normal South uh, soccer, I think like Facebook group or stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, right. I've seen yeah. the Instagram post. You can tell how much he loves just the sport of soccer in itself. Mm -hmm. I think everywhere from he'll watch an MLS game to a Juve game to, um, you know, I've heard him talk about even uh, Liga MX and stuff like that. He's he, he watches it all and he'll talk about anything. And um, I think that is a key part of being a coach is I think just being a constant student of the game and constantly watching the game and being sure. in love with the game. Um, that passion and that energy is um, very easily easily transferable then to your players because I think that um, as a player, if I, I think it's hard for me to connect with the coach if the coach doesn't, you know, if I can't tell the coach is as, you know, into it as I am. Sure. And I will say Calipari, um, every time I talked with him and every time I saw him, you could tell that his mind it's in some way was on soccer. Um, yeah. Which, which respect. Absolutely. I mean, and it's also something, I mean, I would look around at, at maybe some of the other, the other coaches and I don't, I didn't know them personally, but I think we were lucky to have someone with a, a pedigree in the game as coach Calipari. I mean, I think he was, he obviously played for Eastern Illinois university and I think was, they, I don't know if they won a national championship, but it was, it was a, gr a great program when he was, no, he would, Maybe they didn't win a uh, national championship, but he was an All-American on the mm -hmm. team. Um, and then I had a cap, I think, for the, the Canadian national team. Yeah. Um, and so, like, to have that be your high school coach, and mm -hmm. again, I don't know the other coaches in our conference, but probably didn't have that pedigree. It was like, mm -hmm. it, we were lucky, I think, in a lot of ways. I, I yeah. agree with you. Um, but, yeah, so I, I guess... I wanted to then ask, as you kind of got later on in your high school career, I know you you mentioned that kind of you were um, deciding whether or not uh, to even play after after high school. But um, I don't know if you want to talk about your kind of your decision a little bit more about your decision making progress uh, process and um, yeah, how things then maybe started at at Dubuque and um, yeah, maybe get into that side of things. Yeah, uh, so I'll say that uh, I think from the beginning, it was nothing against uh, soccer in itself, but I just kind of felt like, um, in general, uh, I, I always went and visited my brother at Mizzou. I loved sure. the school, um, and that's kind of where I was set on going. Uh, I did a few visits there, stuff like that, um, and everything seemed all, you know, clear-cut. Now, 
my connection with UD, which is always kind of interesting to me at least, is so I grew up going to Loris All Sports Camp, which Loris is our right. rival school. Town, yeah. And uh, very, very big uh, historic soccer program there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'd always gone to that camp growing up. And I think it was my senior year, going into my senior year. In fact, it was the day Man United signed Zlatan on a free. Oh, okay. Um, I remember I was wearing my United kit. We were picking up my sister from camp. And uh, we just decided, hey, let's go check out UD. We, we've always, I think every summer for like 10 years, we had been in Dubuque, but we had never sure. actually checked out UD. Yeah. So we go over, we drive up. It's only like two minutes away from Loris College. I get out of the car. First person we see is uh, Coach Berna, our girls coach. And I'm wearing my United jersey, and he's just, like, talking with me. He's asked if I'm a soccer fan, stuff like that, how old I am. Um, and I tell him that, you know, I'm going to my senior year, and I play soccer. And so he gets me in contact with Coach Johnson, who's the guys coach at UD. Wow, yeah. And uh, so then throughout the whole year, then we had been um, – just got, I'd gotten talking with him. Uh, he had shown some interest. I uh, came up and saw UD's first ever um, first ever uh, program win against Loris, which was really oh. cool. Um, in fact, the guy who uh, scored the winning goal, his brother is currently uh, he plays for Man City. Is it? Do you know Rodri? Yeah, uh, the, yeah. The, yeah. His brother played at UD. Wow! Uh, really? That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, so that was cool. Uh, I got to see that game, and throughout the whole year um, was just kind of um, – I really liked UD. I just was not – it wasn't. It was nothing wrong with UD. I was just I, – I wasn't ready to really say no to Mizzou yet just because yeah. my brother was there. Um, and, again, had always been a big fan of it and uh, really liked it. And I think finally I, I went and visited my brother um, – and uh, just, I think I just stayed the night with him. I don't know, no, nothing big, but uh, it was only like a weekend I was there. And I think after that, I did a tour that weekend with some uh, people at, at Mizzou, and I was pretty ready to uh, commit there. Um, my dad said on the way back, he's like, all right, we'll just wait it out because um, you got the overnight at UD next week. So I agreed and uh, ended up doing the overnight. Um, and at the overnight, met. Uh, two kids who two of them have gone on to be two of my best friends. Really? Uh, they helped, uh, they helped me, I guess, in my time here. So j- shout out Josh Merkel and Chris Rigby. Uh, they're, uh, one of the, Chris was my roommate actually this past year. And Josh is a good friend of mine, just lives right up the street. But, uh, they were the first two people I met on my overnight, uh, played with the team, uh, stayed with another kid. Uh, and I just kind of figured, you know, what, this is a lot of fun. I I could definitely see myself playing at this kind of level. Yeah. So, you know, why not try it? Um, sure. And I think from then on, I, I, I've been extremely blessed, again, with the opportunities and experiences it brought me because then I ended up going on uh, my freshman year. My roommate was from Sweden. Uh, after my freshman year, I ended up going out to Sweden and Germany to visit both my wow. roommates. Wow, that's uh, amazing. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun, and I think that I I definitely credit that opportunity um, from UD soccer because without uh, it was actually funny because I I was a bio major at the time, and there okay. was a class that was going to uh, going to study like the environment and sustainability in Sweden, and uh, I came home one day and I was like, hey, I'd been as my roommate, I was like, I'd been, um, you ever heard of Vekwa Sweden? That's where this class is going. He's like, no ways, that's where I'm from. And he started going crazy. And like, cause that's like, like exactly in Sweden where he's from. So uh, I ended up taking the trip, going out there and then flew out to Stuttgart, Germany after and visited my other, my current, one of my current roommates. Really? Um, really? But yeah, I think that just and from going on and making the jump to play college soccer, it gave me a lot of interesting uh, opportunities. And I will say one thing that um, I think that, if I'm giving advice to um, sure. you know, kids yeah. who are yeah. going in to play college soccer, especially if you're, a fr- if you're already playing, if you're a freshman, if you're going in this year at some point, I think my biggest advice is, or my two biggest pieces right now are um, enjoy it, enjoy where you're at, enjoy every step because um, there's always something, no matter how crappy the three-a-day sessions may get or, you know, the sprints, the 5 a.m. workouts, stuff like that no matter how crappy that stuff gets at times, um, enjoy it. And secondly, uh, I think this is a big one. 
is if you're not playing after your freshman year, don't quit. Don't yeah, get up and yeah. leave schools. Um, stick with it. I don't think in my experience, I've never seen a coach out to get a player. And for some reason, I think that, um, and I, and I understand, I think I, I know my freshman year, uh, at UD, I didn't get any playing time. And it was one of those things that I, I think at times you want to, you want to tell yourself, Hey, the coach is out to get me to make yourself feel better. Um, but in my experience, I've never met a coach and I've never really heard of a coach that is truly out to get a player where they don't play them. So I think that if you're not playing after your freshman year, don't worry about it. Work hard, keep pushing, but also enjoy the experience of where you're playing. That's a big part of it too, is you can be um, starting on a conference and, you know, national championship winning side, but if you hate the experience, then it's going to suck either way. Um, but if you, whether you're playing or not for a team that's winning or not, and you're enjoying it and, you know, you're working for your spot on the team. I think that's where the most uh, fulfillment and enjoyment comes out of playing college soccer. That's a real, I mean, again, a, a, just a, a great point. I think that, that just enjoying it. I mean, cause as much as it is about, like you said, doing those 5 a.m. workouts, doing the working hard and pushing yourself as hard as, as far as you can go, it's also about getting the balance of enjoying it. You know, you do have to enjoy it, whatever you're doing, you know, whatever, wh whether it's soccer or something else. And um, I also think that your advice of not quitting after, you know, a, a first year that doesn't go as planned or a first year where you're maybe not getting the minutes that you um, feel like you deserve or expect it or whatever um, of just sticking it out is again, a great message and can be translated to so many different areas of life. I think it, it just, it is so important and, and such a, um, something I'm glad you, you, you wanted to share. And the, and I think it's really poignant advice as well. Um, and I, the other thing I was going to say is just, we talked about the experiences that soccer brings as a whole, but it's also crazy. Sometimes it's a crazy sport in that, um, and I guess there's some parallels to, to other sports in terms of um, you never know who you're going to meet type of thing. Um, mm -hmm. But like you said, I mean, what are the what is the chances or what are the chances that you are there in a Man U jersey and the girls coach sees you at that time and starts talking to you and then you kind of build up that relationship as well as the people that you've met. I mean, it's just things are things fit together sometimes when you when you um in the game and because of the the game and especially i don't know yeah especially going in and taking that step uh to to play in college has obviously paid off in, in hugely in, in so many uh different ways and has allowed you like you said to do things and travel to places and meet people that maybe you wouldn't have um you know outside of, outside of playing but um, yeah, so I was just gonna, I, I, I wanted to ask then kind of a follow up question about um, how your experience has been a little bit more at, at Dubuque in terms of, and I mean to say here, like, how do you think the, the soccer is different from high school, from the youth clubs you played for? Do you notice a lot of differences? What about also, I mean, um, it's not something I have down here on my questions, but do you notice any differences in the way the foreign players play compared to the American nationals and what your thoughts on that are? Yeah. Um, so I think starting off with the difference between college and like the youth level in high school uh, is I think college, it, it's, it's two different things where I feel like um, not only is it just like a step above athletically um, and, you know, playing wise, there's, I mean, you're not playing against kids anymore. You're playing against sure. men mm -hmm. that I, uh, um, there are some kids out there that, you know, you got to be careful that if you just, if you go in soft, they're going to get you. They're going yeah. to come back hard. Um, <clears throat> but not only that, but I do feel like, you know, in high school, in my experience, I played with a lot of, um, I played with a lot of, you know, really talented and really good teams. I've played with players who uh, I've gotten really close with, but at the college level, it is different where, um, you do have a different connection with a kid that you've done sprints at 5:30 in the morning with. Right. Um, you have a different connection with people that you've done seven hour bus rides with. Um, and it's just the college games. I think it's, I think every part of high school and youth soccer, but almost to the extreme, um, you know, in terms of the workouts, in terms of the playing, in terms of the relationships as well. Um, and I think that you do build up, 
a level that even though you know you may get frustrated with your teammates a lot more than you did in high school and you may get like you know you know you might start getting a lot more pissed off than you did in 100%. high school um there are times where it it it's kind of um it comes back to that and you know you have more trust in those people than you did in high school when it sure. comes down to the game um you have more trust you have you know you're willing to you know beat some guy on the field you want to come in and tackle somebody if they come in and, and rough up your teammates stuff sure. like that um and I think it goes down to you know in my experience uh even you know just the trust in the coaches then too because the coaches then uh from what I've noticed at the college level um they they care a lot more and not saying you know Cal Pari or any of my club coaches didn't care they they all cared a great deal but um to the credit of Coach Johnson, uh, my coach at UD, uh, Coach Bergstrand, who is our former assistant coach, and then our current coaches, uh, Coach Tom and Coach uh, McKenzie, um, they really do a great job of, you know, uh, for, for instance, I love smoking meats. So, like, I've got a okay. smoker, and I'll smoke sure. cold pork, stuff like that. Sure. And my co- Coach Johnson will give me, he's talked me through recipes, stuff like that, and he'll come out of his way right. after the practice. He asks, hey, do you ever smoke? Uh, the chicken I was telling you about they get to know you on a personal level and it's to the point where you can feel comfortable going in where if you have problems going on in school or you know anything happening in your college experience um, you can go in and talk with them I've had those times uh, with coach Johnson uh, and you know coach Bergstrand uh, this year a little bit with you know coach Tom and stuff and it's been an experience where uh, that trust in your coaches is, I think, amplified and that, you know, relationship with those people above you uh, and around you is really amplified that even though um, y- it may feel like tensions arise at times, it just, it, it's just because there's a lot more emotion at play. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, I feel like, you know, everybody on this field or everybody on my team who's, you know, on the field, not on the field, uh, all the coaching staff, you trust. Or, sure. I mean, trust for sure. Absolutely. Um, that's a little bit of a difference between high school and college is because at high school, you know, not everyone's going to go on and play for, uh, you know, college. Not everybody's going to even play all four years of high school. Absolutely. Um, the coaches, too, understand that. So, you know, they may not give attention to kids they feel like, you know, might not move on. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just think in, it, it's different because in college, everything really is amplified. It's the extremes of high school and youth soccer, you know, pushed um a lot further but it's sure. it's definitely a great experience and i and i would say um the foreign players compared to the american players um it really it it depends because we've had we have a lot of kids from um military bases in germany so they're right. american grew up on military bases and they obviously have like my my roommate's half german half uh american and you can see the german when he plays he's really? very no, you know, no jokes, just he, it's simple, but very good passes. You know, he yeah. does everything. He does the simple, the simple and the basics flawlessly, which allows him then to do some other things uh, pretty confidently because, you know, he just, he, he's very to the point. Um, the Swedish players, they're, um, they're, I don't know. Every Swede is like six foot three and blonde. <laughs> and half of them are jacked. Yeah. And they're, I mean, they're just, they're crazy. Absolutely. So, a lot of them, I mean, it depends on the player, but a lot of them really are pretty physical. Um, they like to, uh, they, they know when to slow the game down if they need to. Um, sure. They know when to, you know, speed it up. They know when to use their body really well. Right. Very good stuff like that. Um, so it, there are differences. There are subtle differences, but I do feel like, you sure. know, being the D3 level, um, everybody who's on the team, is 100% qualified to be on the team. Sure. So uh, I think that it's not necessarily a case of that, that, that they're better, that, you know, the Americans are better. Sure. I think you learn from each side of the game. Because yeah. I, I will say, um, in my experience, D3 soccer is similar uh, to high school soccer in terms of the athleticism. Absolutely. I always felt like club soccer in high school was a bit more technical, whereas the IHSA soccer was more athletic and it was a lot more kick and run. Sure. which um, I'm not saying that's how we play, but we come across teams that play that way and sure. um, come across teams that, you know, is, feels definitely more like a high school game. So mm-hmm. I think a lot of kids in America are used to that and they kind of bring that experience to the table. Whereas a lot of the uh, international kids kind of bring what they've learned um, and they're all different things to the table. Yeah, so, absolutely. 
it's a win-win for everyone though we get to learn from each other and it's just really cool being on the team with everyone yeah absolutely that's a um a great kind of synopsis of of um of what's been going on there and and, and kind of how you feel um obviously uh division three relates to um high school and youth clubs and and how just the game uh, and I'm, I'm interested as well uh, to hear about how some of the, the other teams that, that you come up against play and that they do kind of, um, that they are a little bit more of that long ball kick and run type of thing. Because uh, I think that that's, to be honest, that's probably what I, or it's what I hear a lot of um, in the college game at any level, Division two, Division one, NAI. I mean, we at the school that I went to, we certainly came up uh against teams and would play ourselves at times uh you know that that type of style um i think like you said it's very much a a style that americans are used to and and yeah. maybe not something as much that the foreign players swedish german whatever are um as accustomed to and like you said at times maybe they're beneficial to have because they can slow the game down they can do the simple things right they can you know keep possession of the ball a bit a bit better um but yeah and then i i also wanted to ask and it's something that just popped into my mind was um in terms of the soccer stuff what is your what does the future look like i mean you have one more year at at uh, dubuque so what what are are there plans for next season what is uh what's going on with that right now yeah so right now i uh, i'm focused on my senior year it'll be uh It'll be fun. I think everything's set to start again. We got an email um, and June 10th is when everything's cleared, so we could start it then. Oh, right. Uh, okay. Preseason then. Uh, so for me, uh, it, it's all about finishing out this last year and then from then on seeing where soccer in any way can be put in my life. Uh, right, as I said before, I'm an education major, so uh, whether that's becoming a high school coach one day or something like that, that would yeah. be definitely fun. Um, but really in any way, just trying to keep soccer in my life. Um, sure. I, I, I'm not, I don't think that, uh, I'm a guy who has the drive and motivation to go to, to try and go pro after this and complete respect to you for this. Cause it's, it's, um, not easy, but it's definitely, uh, it's something worth putting in the work if that's what you want to do. Um, and I yeah. think that for, for me, it's one of those things that, um, I just, uh, really want to start uh i i've been i've been very fortunate and uh especially the past few summers to work at loris all sports camp and just being able to work Excellent. with kids is really fulfilling to me so i think that um you know being a high school coach stuff like that would be a lot of fun after this but yeah for right now i know I'm, I'm i'm focused on uh this season getting in shape for the season and getting ready because um you know i think this year we're gonna have a really uh good chance of contending for some um for some prizes this year. Uh, I think that our conference is going to be a bit more open this year. Uh, you know, Loris College, I heard, is going through some coaching changes. Sure. Uh, that could be interesting. Uh, Luther College is always a good uh, college in Iowa that is very good at uh, soccer. So, uh, but I think that we have a very good, uh, strong team coming in. We, have, we kept a good core uh, of players from last season. Um, and we're adding some really talented recruits onto it. So, um, yeah, yeah. I think just uh, the the main focus is this season, just uh, sure. seeing what I'm, we can. Sorry, I was just going to say that that again. Something else that that isn't on my list, but something that popped in, and you mentioned about uh, staying fit. Do you have any specific things that that maybe you want to share that that you do to keep fit? Uh, individual training. What what are your what are your well, uh, what is your routine there? Yeah, so right now um, we have a, a fitness coach who uh, will email us like weekly workouts in which, so this is kind of, again, this is a different year from what we usually do because of right. the whole uh, corona thing, but how we would usually do it is we would usually get a, uh, a workout plan and sure. um, you got just a packet and you know you go through day by day, whatever it says you do. Um, this year though, because the past three months we were in, quarantine and we were supposed to be doing off-season lifts he would we did like microsoft teams which is like a little oh, yeah 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 like, like a little like app where you can be in a group with people and you can share stuff so our fitness coach would send us workouts and we would have to record them whether if it was a running workout we'd have like an app uh, like the under armor excellent okay like my run or my run sure uh, and uh 
anything else, like any lifting things, he'd give us like body weight lifts, like single sure. leg squats. I uh, just filmed those. Um, and now we kind of, as a team, voted to continue that. Um, and then part of it too is every day I, I like doing, I like getting my daily doses of fitness into in just little ways in terms sure. of uh, right now I, I, I go down, dry, or ride my bike uh, like two miles to downtown and help a woman with yard work. Uh, wow, for, that's excellent. That's, that's really nice. Wow. Yeah. So that's always fun because I mean the yard work itself is at times a workout, especially sure. like moving but uh not just that but then riding my bike to and from uh especially sure. if you've sure, been man. in the view loris boulevard is a steep hill and okay. I live pretty much off loris so i have to go up and down that hill every day um but yeah just finding stuff like that going out and playing with your friends um a uh, big one that i like playing basketball that's always a good yeah time. great cross training yeah i used to do that a ton I, it was something that uh, in terms of cross training i would do all the time i would uh one-on-one -on -one, uh, basketball was always something that uh, that I would do. Certainly, certainly you talk about endurance, you talk about speed, agility, quickness. It's always a yeah. great, uh, great sport um, to get you fit, get you ready for, for soccer, for sure. Yeah. And then I, I will say the, I think the biggest one that I've noticed is um, in the past few months, and it sucked because right before quarantine, I got in a good habit of, I was going every day to the YMCA. I worked, I used to work at the YMCA for the before and after school program. Okay. So I'd get a free membership and go swim there every day. Um, and then hit the sauna after. So that was a lot of fun because That's just really, nice. really uh, yeah, it's a lot tougher of a workout than I remember. <laughs> I, I, I would never swim consistently. I just remember like going and swimming as a kid at like, in, like middle school with your friends at the rice pool and stuff yeah. like that. And then now I get in a real pool and I'm doing laps and I'm like, oh my God, I'm dead after three <laughs> laps. But uh, yeah. that one's a great work. I mean, low impact, but at the same time, if you, I, you know, it, it's not always easy to get access to a pool, but if you have the access, it's one of the best workouts you can do, but yeah, uh, yeah, I think you're right. Um, I was going to ask then before, so I wanted to get into kind of some of your, um, your own kind of podcast stuff and get a little bit more information about that. But I wanted to ask quickly on, uh, kind of a last question before I get into the podcast and your podcast is, um, just a little fun question of your favorite team and your favorite player. still Marco Royce or has yeah. that changed? Uh, okay. So I'd say I'd still say my favorite player overall is Marco Royce. Uh, my favorite team is Man United. Yeah, um, okay. I will say I'm a big Borussia Dortmund guy, though. Um, yeah, obviously, yeah. I'll show you. I got. One of my oh friends. well, there it is. Yeah, that's a, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah so I uh, big Marco Royce guy, but overall Man United, and I will say right now, uh, my favorite player for United is big Bruno Fernandez. The oh yeah, signing yeah. Uh, huge impact but yeah he's come on I was, very I was strong to ask you who's your favorite team um my favorite team so uh is a difficult one because it's probably right now um tottenham just because my grandma lives about two miles from the tottenham stadium okay. um and, but she probably lives equidistant to arsenal as well so i guess it could be arsenal um yeah. or those are the teams i guess maybe that i have the the closest connection with but in terms mm -hmm. of the real closest connection, it's a team in the championship, Millwall. Um, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And because my dad, that's that's the area kind of of London uh, that my dad uh, grew up in. And okay. so he always supported that team. And so, again, that's probably a team where I am, have a little bit more connection with. And I would probably say mm -hmm. um, to some people, not necessarily West Ham fans who are huge, uh, a huge rival, I would say that maybe that's who I support. Um, mm -hmm. and they will all have a crazy history of, of, uh, if, whether you know or not, it's just fights and ridiculousness. If you've seen the movie, I don't know if you've seen it, uh, it's called Green Street Hooligans. Yeah, uh, we watched that on a bus ride last year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that, that's kind of, uh, you know a little bit about the, the story there, but yeah. And then favorite player, I mean, I don't know if I could narrow it down to one, maybe it's, for, it's some for different reasons. So I should probably say just players that I try to emulate. So, so Michael Carrick um, or Tony. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I, again, I also have, I have a laundry list of, of guys, but pro have also, or also guys like um, Sergio Busquets uh, mm -hmm. and Jorginho now. Um, but yeah. And then, I mean, the other one that pops into my mind and it's more around because of what he's dealt with on the mental health side of things is uh, Jesus Navas um okay yeah he's so he has a he is a just a, a great story of of overcoming tons of um 
anxiety and not being able to leave, leave um, um, his home club of Sevilla, but obviously he ended up being able to come to Man City uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of spend a, a few years or several years there. Um, but yeah, so he's another one. Uh, but yeah, that's that's kind of a maybe some some favorite teams and players rather than a favorite team and and a player. But yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So if you if you're ready, I mean, I, I I'd like to know about this this uh, podcast and kind of how it how it got started. Yeah. So um, it, it's called Full Ninety with the Fellas. Uh, it's me and a good buddy and teammate of mine, Andrew Gilly. Sure. Uh, we pretty much, we have been talking about doing a podcast for about a year now. I think this happened, uh, you know, my sophomore year, I was talking to them about it. So um, this past year, uh, once quarantine kind of hit, that's when we were like, all right, we're going to, we're going to, we have the time. Absolutely. I guess pretty much the only thing we're missing right now is live soccer to talk about, but we can find other things to talk about. Sure. So we got in a, a pretty consistent habit then of like about every Tuesday, and that's kind of the you know schedule we're trying to stay on that uh in recent weeks has been a little tough but um it's pretty much just we love talking about um premier league champions league bundesliga any any soccer we can get in any soccer we can get our hands on i mean this this past week's podcast we talked about uh the mls's back tournament Absolutely, and, yeah. Uh, yeah and then some transfer just some transfer rumors but we'll talk about anything uh it's it's about an hour long each episode we ended it with a game called Who Am I's and how the Who Am I's go is first hint is always uh, three players I've played with. Um, second, it's, or the last two hints are just pretty much whatever. Um, and it's fun because it's just an opportunity for us to test each other on just our knowledge. But sure, yeah. um, it really has been uh, a great thing because part of quarantine, one of my things that I've been doing consistently is the podcast. Absolutely. Um, and it really has, it's, I, I've loved it because um, I think that since high school, I've really gotten into soccer, and it's frustrating because um, I don't find as many people that really want to consistently talk about it. Even sure. my own teammates, like my own roommates, me and, like, uh, I remember the beginning of the year, I made the bold claim that Fred has been one of the top five midfielders in the Premier League. Yeah. Two, really, one of my roommates and one of our other friends were like, okay, sh shut up, you're just saying that because you're United fan. <laughs> And then, like, me and this other kid, uh, Andrew Gilly, who's actually who's a Liverpool fan, so he'd be the last person to support me, uh, me and him started talking about it and stuff like that, and you know, he agreed with me. But we've really gotten a – I think for a while we kind of – we, I don't know, wanted to consistently just talk about soccer because um, yeah. we just – I mean, I get bored and I just watch the stupidest soccer <laughs> videos, like top ten celebrities who, like, like soccer teams, right. just things like that, yeah. like – like, I don't need to know that Elton John is a huge Watford fan, but I know it. <laughs> Stuff yeah, like that. So I think it's just kind of fun for us to have that opportunity to just, you know, talk with each other and kind of hopefully get other people interested in soccer and kind of what's going on because – there's a lot of cool stuff. Every week, uh, every league, every team has something different going on. Absolutely. Um, I just think that, uh, you know, sharing that knowledge, sharing that, um, I guess, the draw that it, that, that it has on us, that appeal – I'm um, trying to get other people interested. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, just the podcast is really about, you know, anything soccer that comes out, we, we, we want to talk about it. We want to hear other people's opinions. We want to give our opinions, stuff like that. So. Absolutely. That's a, that's a um, yeah, great, again, synopsis for the podcast. And people can find it on um, SoundCloud, Spotify. Those are the two uh, places that people can find it. SoundCloud and uh, Apple iTunes. Apple yeah. iTunes. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah um, we're – I need to figure out the Spotify so far. Yeah, like, yeah. I need to do the same. To be honest, I think we were talking about it, and um, yeah, I was trying to trying to find a way to to upload it and just get it on as many as many uh, platforms as possible. Uh, just like you said, so you can spread the word. And um, I will say as well that I do agree with you in terms of Fred. Uh, I think. Yeah. Uh, I think. I think they he gets too much stick. Uh, and people, I wonder sometimes if people are actually watching the full 90 minute match yeah. because I think he's a, he's a quality player and people just, <laughs> I don't know. It's, he's one of those, he's one of those where I think it's just what he does is like a bit of a Jorginho or something like that, where they, he just gets a lot of stick because he doesn't do, you know, a hundred step overs or he doesn't yeah. score the goals. And it's a lot of it is sideways and back, but sometimes you need a player to do yeah. that. And, and, mm -hmm. and if you watch him, you just, I think you can see how much quality he does have. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I really, I mean, once he, once he got a foothold in the team and started to kind of get a consistent run and, uh, I think he even scored a couple of goals and, and, yeah. uh, I was really, I was almost happy for him because I was like, okay, finally these pundits have to have to say he's doing well. Like I was, exactly. I was happy for him. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just interesting. It's it's really interesting to. I mean, you think about that with with other players as well. That I just, I mean, I don't know what your feelings on um, like Granite Jacka and stuff like that are, but go ahead, you I- maybe. I think okay, Shock is a player that I'll never believe. I, I I'll never truly think he's one of the top midfielders in the Premier League. But I think the way Arsenal fans have treated him at times over the yeah. years, how opponents have treated him, is I've seen him score bangers against United. I've seen him do some pretty decent things. But yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna. I, I don't think he's one of the top top midfielders. But I think that he's a guy that with Arsenal being in a weird. I think this is like an eight-year transition phase of trying to get back to being one of the best teams. Okay. Uh, I don't know if under the ownership they have, it'll ever happen again. But um, I think that Granit Xhaka is a – I think he's overall a just a, a decent Premier League midfielder. Yeah. I think that um, he doesn't necessarily belong in the top six, uh, I think, in terms of overall quality. But he does show that he can be – I think he'd be a great squad player in an arsenal. Um, and there are times where he does really – you know, just simple and basic things right. And mm-hmm. I think that Granite Shock is somebody that Arsenal fans and pundits have given a lot of criticism to over the past few years that doesn't always deserve it. I think just an overall underperforming Arsenal team, he's gotten a lot of the stick, which I don't think is consistently fair. I think, I mean, I love Mesut Ozil, but I think the past season, Mesut Ozil has a lot of questions to answer off of mm-hmm. his performances. And I think that he only has two, assist, two assists this year. And Bruno Fernandes walked in in December and already has like, four assists or double that yeah it's yeah unique. it's it's interesting I mean it's really interesting I, I agree with you I think about uh Jack as well in terms of his um how he's been treated and I think what I was going to say about him is that it's just it's interesting to see sometimes over here where the pundits or fans will be constantly on a player like Fred and yet they'll still be picked every week. And so you realize, yeah. oh, there's this disconnect. There's this disconnect from what the fans and the pundits think and mm-hmm. what the coaches and the players think. I mean, because you could just see the support. Like, if he was not – in my mindset is, is is if he wasn't good enough, they wouldn't play him. It's, it's, exactly. too, high to, it's too high of a level. They've got – you think they're going to play a bad player? I mean, okay, maybe sometimes. I, maybe so, And maybe some players are – underperforming and they do they just don't have the guys so they have to play guys but to consistently play a guy over and over I just don't always know yeah. I, I don't know I think I don't think he can be awful again maybe you can yeah. have the opinion that he's not not as good but I think the way the pundits speak about some of these guys it's like they're the worst player that ever existed and yeah. <laughs> I, I just again I hope that I hope that may again maybe through all this virus stuff that maybe that will change a little bit of of pundits and who knows whether that's true or not but of pundits just absolutely laying out guys because mm-hmm. it's sometimes it's it's I don't know I think it's it's a bit unfair with certain people but yeah, yeah. and I definitely think especially when you last through three managers like that I think yeah signed him Emery played him now our sure. playing him and then Lundberg had him in the team for like the few weeks or a few months he was in charge. I think that, yeah, I mean, it is one of those things that if, if, if coaches, if a manager is seeing somebody train every day, week in and week out, and they're playing them, um, you may not necessarily always agree with um, – I, I think part of it is maybe just the style of play too. Very um, true. I, would, I never – know nothing against Fellaini. I just never wanted to see Fellaini on the field because it, it signified that we were playing a very – Yeah, defensive. exactly, yeah. You know, try and kick it into him over the top and hope that right. he can get – you know, his head on it just because he's tall. Um, and I, I think that, you know, Granite Shock is just a victim of uh, an underperforming Arsenal team. They're underperforming in their board and their management over the past few years. So, sure. Uh, yeah, I think that he's a guy and like that, you know, Fred, there are players, there'll always be players that I think people just look to um, criticize just because it's, sure. it's lazy. It's lazy criticism. I don't sure. know. I, so I, what I was going to do then, I, I, the kind of the the next grouping of questions that I have move a little bit away from from the soccer, and, and uh, I wanted to ask about. I know you mentioned your major and and stuff like that, um, but maybe you could talk about about how you, if you've enjoyed or, or uh, how 
your studies or academic uh, stuff has gone at school and um, maybe what you're doing outside of soccer, if there's any activities, clubs, things like that? Yeah, um, so I'm an education major. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's taught me a lot about, I started off as, wow, my mom likes to touch me. <laughs> um, so I, 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 I'm an education major. I was a uh, uh, bio major my freshman year. Um, and, and I don't know, I think a big part of academics, especially when you go to college, is figure out what you want to do. Don't do something because it comes with a big paycheck. Sure. And also, you know, you know, figure out what, what truly makes you happy. Because I think I, I wanted to go into uh, biology and then to maybe try med school or, you know, PT, um, which would have been uh, really fun, uh, you know, respect anybody who does that but for me I realized uh my first summer of college or going after my freshman year of college I went to so I did my trip to uh Sweden and then Germany yeah. and then uh I got off the plane and eight hours later drove to back to Iowa to work at Loris all sports camp and that's where I quickly realized that um I didn't think bio was the right thing for me uh partly because I uh, Working with kids is a, in my opinion, a very uh, fulfilling experience because um, there are a lot of kids who really do need role models. There are kids out there who sure. need people around them. Um, and I think that at times, uh, maybe coming from a community like Wheaton, you don't always see that because I think there are, there, you know, there's a lot of uh, privileged areas and, and families. I, I mean, I, I come from one of them, you know, it's one of those things where I think just everybody in Wheaton, you know. I'm very privileged and lucky to have the things and opportunities I've had. Very and true. some kids don't always have those opportunities. And I think that, um, you know, even just giving a kid a friend for a day 100%. or a week yeah. and stuff like that is, is huge for them. And so I, I quickly learned while working at Loris that um, that was something that I wanted to do and be a positive influence in uh, someone's life like that. Because, um, you know, it's, it's hard to consistently be a positive influence in, um, my peers' lives. I think I, I, I like to think that I make them overall pretty happy, but it's hard to sometimes always connect with somebody, um, you know, your age or older than you, if you don't always know the experiences they're going through. But sure. I feel like kids, um, they're different. They, and, you know, you can connect with kids maybe a bit easier. Absolutely. Um, what they're going through. But um, so, yeah, I started doing that. I started working at Loris um, and it completely uh, changed my college trajectory. Uh, and outside of soccer, I've been working at the YMCA, the before and after school program, just going up okay. there. Yeah, and it's it's a lot of fun. And I, when I'm not there, I'll be doing uh, in service hours for schools where I'll just go in and you know I'll be working with kids, whether it's mentoring, whether it's working with the with a teacher, um, stuff like that. And so it, it really has been, and it's I think a really um, amazing opportunity for me. I think it's something that uh, more people should look into, just because uh, there is a teacher shortage. Um, Absolutely especially male teachers. And I think that um, in general, if you're worried about, if you're worried about money, I won't be the first person to tell you it's not always the best money. However, there's job security, but also I, I will say, um, in my opinion, you'll love every second of it because you really get to meet and uh, work with some really cool people, some cool kids, and uh, have some really interesting and uh, unique experiences. From it. Yeah. Well, that's, it's, it's amazing that you say that. And it's, I think, um, obviously the switch from, it's interesting to hear your switch from, from, uh, biology to, to education. Um, and it's also, I think I want to, uh, you know, maybe commend you for, for your outlook on education and kind of why you want to move into that field just as a selfless one, you know, just kind of to, you know, like you said, even if it's making, being a friend to a, a kid for a day or an afternoon, I think that that's, um, such a great mindset to have such a great mindset to share and um i don't know yeah I, I like you said i'm sure it must make you feel it must be incredibly rewarding to you know kind of have those experiences and like you said I, i'm sure if there is other people thinking about it and wondering you know want to go into education or or think they might like to do teaching but are worried about some of the the um the outside factors, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, your story or your, your uh, experience with it, of it being so rewarding can push them in the right direction. One can only hope. So yeah, I, I, again, thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate it. Um, 
But yeah, so then I, I also wanted to ask about, uh, obviously, you, you know, you're living a, a fair distance from home and uh, mm -hmm. how that has been. Has that been something you feel like uh, you had to adjust to? Has it been hard, easy? Um, I think that in ways it's, uh, it's, it's easy at times. It's hard at times because it's sure. easy, when, you know, um, from a freedom perspective when, you know, you're a kid, my, you know, our age, you want, yeah. want your freedom. So that part's always pretty easy. But uh, I think that in, we're at a point where I think that I, a lot of kids want to, and a lot of, I've noticed from my own experience, people my age wanting more and more of that freedom at a younger age. And I, and sure. I get that, but I think that there's no harm and no, um, you know, uh, shame and to an extent being, you know, ha still having that closeness and having that dependent. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, not, and not on everything, you know, you, you still need to be independent and, uh, you know, you still have to have your own you know, sense of freedom. Sure. But I, I definitely think that uh, I live three hours away. So if something does happen, I'm, I'm within distance where I can drive home and stuff like that. And I'm Absolutely. very grateful because, uh, I mean, my brother, he went to Mizzou, that was seven hours away from Wheaton. So it's one of those things where three hours is a lot more manageable than seven hours. And if anything were to happen, say I get sick, say, say you know, I get an accident, say something back home happens, I'm, it's a lot easier for me to get home. And I, I do, I do value that. And I think that, uh, despite having my freedoms, I, it's important that I do listen to my parents a lot of the times with the advice they give me, because even though I'm three hours away and I'm doing my own thing at times, they still are a part of my life and they're still, um, have an influence on, you know, some of the things I'm doing and stuff like that. Um, I'm very grateful to say that, you know, they help pay for some things like my housing. Um, so I still definitely have to listen to them because, you know, I'm still very much dependent on them. Absolutely. But. Yeah. That's a, yeah. And, and like you said, it's about, I think, obviously finding that balance um, of still being dependent and being independent at the same time. Um, in terms of, I know, obviously, and sorry if you already, if you already mentioned this, but um what are your thoughts after, uh, I know obviously you said your focus is very much on this senior year, but do you, uh, do you have thoughts on moving back, moving back to Wheaton area or do you want to stay around kind of the school or somewhere else? Yeah, so it really depends on what uh, education allows. So the, um, Absolutely. my teaching license will be eligible, stuff like that. Um, I think one thing that I am interested in looking into uh, was, so part of my uh, trip to Europe when I was in Germany, I met a teacher on one of the American bases who said that he signed up for a program, which oh, allowed him yeah, to teach. And I think prior to Germany, he taught in South Korea and Indonesia. Wow. And then he was moving to Budapest in a few months from when I was talking with him. Okay. So um, something like that would be very interesting to me. I'd love to try one of those, you know, teaching abroad programs because uh, I, I'm just somebody who really likes to go see the world. Um, I, I think that my trip to Sweden and Germany was one of the most life-changing experiences for the fact that you really get to put into perspective. Um, I think just maybe not how similar or how different the world is, but just, you know, how every place is unique in its own way, yet people share very similar experiences. So um, just being able to go and connect with different people from all around, all around the world is definitely a goal of mine. Um, if I could maybe make it to a few soccer games in the process, yeah. I wouldn't mind that at all. But I think that's uh, definitely a uh, avenue I'd like to look down and see how that turns out. But yeah, it really just depends on with my teaching. Uh, I know Illinois um, and Iowa have a little bit different um, teaching standards. So my right. license in Iowa works for, I think, about half the states of the U.S., uh, it just kind of depends, but then the license from Illinois, I think, kind of works for, like, some of the other states, um, so they don't correlate too well. However, if I wanted to go back to Illinois, I think I'd just have to take a few other classes. Sure. So, um, yeah, it really just depends on that. Gotcha. Well, the, like you said, it, it uh, allows you some freedom and uh, obviously a little bit of uncertainty, but hopefully that's exciting at the same time in that you don't necessarily know whether you'll be in Iowa, you'll be in Illinois, you'll be in um, you know, Indonesia. I think that that's, yeah. it's, it's, it's one of those where you, you know, you will see what happens. And obviously, um, um, I think, you know, we're all trying to, we're all unsure of what the, what the future is going to look like for whatever career we're going into. And so mm -hmm. obviously that's a little bit scary at times, but hopefully a little bit exciting as, as well. Um, 
Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't think that I have a few more questions, but I, I wanted to maybe open it up to um, to you if you wanted to take it anywhere or had anything to ask me, um, and we could just see where it goes from there instead of maybe some of the questions that I had. Yeah, uh, well, I first wanted to say thank you very much for having me on. Oh, uh, no worries at all. Yeah, no also. Worries. I also wanted to say uh, we're very excited to have you on our podcast this week. So if anybody tuning into this wants to see Elliot on our podcast, Full 90 with the Fellas, uh, we have an episode out from this past week. But next week, we're very excited to have you on and talk about kind of, you know, your uh, what you're doing on this podcast, your experience of playing in um, England and stuff. And I think that's a lot of where my curiosity comes from is sure. first off, how it is over there, um, kind of what you've been doing and how that, you know, process is shaping up to look like you do you have a lot of trials with teams how does it work yeah so before the lockdown I was um I was training and trialing uh with some semi-pro and uh one professional club over here um and then where I was getting my matches was just kind of uh, some amateur uh, sides on Saturday and Sunday it was I was just in the very beginning stages like I said I've only been here since uh December And so uh, we didn't, and so then there was a little bit of break, there's a break at the lower levels around that time. So I didn't really get started kind kind of until later January, early February. So didn't really have that much time to get into these trials, but the places that I did uh, go were um, two, two, I think they're sixth or seventh division sides. Uh, They're Um, Mm semi-pro just near my grandma. So I was training and trialing a little bit with, uh, with them and then the one the fully professional side is is in the national league or the the conference uh kind of it's quite a distance uh, not not in terms of miles but it's all public transport over here and so it's i was traveling about on three different trains and a bus you know an hour and a half to the other side of london to train with uh um with bromley as the team uh, down there they're in the i think yeah fifth division uh and so I was just starting starting with them. I had, I had done a few weeks with the the teams uh, near my grandma's, uh, where my grandma lives is is called uh, Enfield. So it was Enfield Town and uh, a team called Herringay uh, Borough. And so I was training and and, and uh, trialing, I guess you could say, uh, with them. And then was starting to go into an actual trial with uh, with Bromley, but. Mm-hmm. Only got about three or four sessions in, and then obviously all this this lockdown has has uh, you know slowed things way down and, and uh, ground everything to a halt. In terms mm-hmm. of when they think, um, so obviously now it's just a- everything I can do on my own, and uh, we're starting. I'm starting to do some one to one sessions with uh, um, one of the the uh, amateur side coaches. Um, he's offering it a little bit, and so it's going all right. But the, I think the, we're really looking for. They think maybe July, um, at some point in July, that these preseasons will start again. And Mm -hmm. at that stage, it'll really be looking to see what's out there. We have we have probably we have several options in in terms of kind of some loose connections or some connections uh, with teams as high up as. uh, League Two or League One, uh, I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm forgetting the 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 teams that we have connected with, but it'll just be about kind of who allows me to come into to trial, you know, um, I would love to go down and, and uh, give it another go with, with Bromley. I think that was a great opportunity. And they're, like I said, a fully professional, professional side. Um, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, we'll see, we'll see what, what happens in July. Obviously like, like everything else is a bit up in the air, but, and, you know, I'm willing to go anywhere in the UK, anywhere in Europe for, for something. Obviously I have um, a few kind of, bases with family friends and family members in the UK and and in around London that allow me um, some good opportunities to just live, you know, here. And I obviously have the British citizenship as well. I don't know if I told you that, but yeah, so I'm a dual citizen as well, so I can stay and work as as long as I want. But um, yeah, so that's kind of the process. Nothing obviously too concrete or nothing flashy to tell you, tell people yet, but uh, certainly yeah. on the hopefully on the road and this this preseason I think will be a big opportunity that's the other thing I'll say is that's usually uh preseason is around you know July August in regular times is is yeah. uh an opportunity oftentimes for um people to trial with teams uh and get looked at because a lot of times that's when obviously these these teams at the lower levels are kind of 
have their mm-hmm. turnover, uh, you know, with players and guys going out of contract. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, so just, uh, just reaching out to people, trying to see, you know, as many, um, uh, trying to make as many connections. And like you said, relationships as I can in the game um, mm-hmm. and hopefully get something for this preseason. Yeah. Now, what I uh, – so you said you had a lot of, like, family and people around London sure. or around the U.K. Um, do you, I guess, not not just, you know, quarantine life, but overall, how is living in England different than being here? Do you like it more? Do you Would you, would you want to stay there uh, for the foreseeable future then? I think so. I mean, honestly, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, if you take quarantine out of it, and even, uh, you know, during quarantine, I think – for me, it was a case of I had been so, as I say in in the the first episode of of this podcast, it had been such a long time coming to try and get over here. It had been a dream for so long, mm-hmm. um, and that getting over here, I think, what wherever I played, whether it was down in the park or is you know with Romney or you know a higher level, whatever, um, I was just extremely grateful to be here. It was one of those where like I kind of. Um, I was coming out of my own kind of battles with, with a, I guess, again, you, hypothetically or metaphorically a virus. And I, so I was just grateful to be able to be on a bus in London, you know, uh, yeah. kind of starting the path to my, uh, my dream and what I wanted to do as my career. And, and so I would say from that standpoint, and because I was just so utterly grateful to be here from the get go, I've really, taken to life in the UK and London and really am enjoying it for the most part, I would say, and can see myself to answer your question, living here, living here yeah. for the foreseeable future, especially. And obviously if I do get hooked on with the team, I think that that yeah. will be, um, there probably won't be much, much time or much room to, uh, to go other places if I am with yeah. a, with a team. Um, but yeah, there's something else I was going to add to that, but I think, I don't know if that, does that answer your question fully? I don't know. Yeah. What, what, yeah. yeah. Would you, I mean, would you ever consider then like going to different countries in Europe? Has that ever been an appeal to you? Absolutely. I think um, if the opportunity arose, I think I would absolutely give it a go. We have some close, uh, or we have some, not close, we have some uh, extended family members in um, Seville down in Spain. And so okay. that, that would be a, uh, uh, that might be an opportunity. I know we have um, a family friend outside of Paris, or maybe I'm getting that wrong, mm-hmm. somewhere in France. And uh, uh, so that, again, that's, I have plays, you know, kind of some family friends or extended relatives that, you know, are spotted around Europe. And if an mm-hmm. opportunity arose to go to Germany, go to France, go to Spain, go to somewhere else in in uh, in Europe, I think I would I'd absolutely uh, take that. I think it's just about, for me right now, it's obviously trying to find the highest level of where I can start, you know, mm-hmm. and trying to use that as a as a launching pad for um, going forward, whether that's seventh, eighth division or higher, fourth, fifth division. I mean, it's just, uh, or in a different country, you know, I think that it's, mm-hmm. it's all just, um, you know, kind of weighing up what's the, the best opportunity is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's 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 always uh, I I don't know I just think it'd be such a cool experience that's something I've always been interested in is just being out living in Europe. So yeah, that's just really I guess from a jealousy standpoint, that's uh, where I'm coming from. Well, it sounds like it sounds like at some point you're I mean you well one you've already been to places that I haven't been to, uh, which is Sweden and Germany, and two I'm sure at some point it sounds like you have that that uh bug of of living in europe and so i think it maybe will be in your future whether it's around teaching or not yeah. and and uh um yeah i mean i think it, it's again, again it's been a great experience for me i don't know if if i don't know how connected you've been with noah but noah did a similar thing um I think I'd heard about that, yeah. Yeah, so he did a similar thing a couple of years ago and kind of had the opposite experience of, I wouldn't say he completely disliked it, but he just didn't quite find his footing in the in the game and just felt mm-hmm. like the life in general tied to that wasn't for him. And so mm-hmm. he ended up moving back. And so I don't, I, I don't think it is for everyone, but I think that yeah. for me and for, um, obviously it sounds like yourself and others out there, it very much so is... Um, can be a great experience to live in in Europe and like I said for me it's been an absolutely insane one for the first six months it will literally be six months I came here December 15th so in two days it'll be six months that I've been in the country and yeah so 
thank you very much. <laughs> and so um yeah so it's been if you had told me that on december 15th i was going to all the the soccer was going to halt and we were going to go into a global pandemic i probably would have said you're crazy but yeah it's yeah. what happened i think i tell everyone my that's been my entire life is just uncertainty and going it going places that i didn't expect i thought i would be over here much sooner than than i thought i thought that you know i would make certain relationships that didn't happen or i would and then others came about um you know because yeah. i went other places and it's just i think that it's, it's easy to look at it and say and look at all the negative look at it like it, i've come over here and it's been so unlucky i've come over here and you know nothing's worked out for me i'm already so late coming on and and feeling all that and i'm not saying that i don't get doubts or fears but it's also <laughs> a case of for me it's just about enjoying every second of it, second of it yeah. even pandemic or not and just staying as positive and optimistic for the future because yeah ultimately it's a case of and i tell it to everyone is i'm here i've i yeah. whenever whenever i you know regardless of what i thought i would do it would come here and regardless of where i thought i'd be playing at this stage at 23 years old i'm on i'm taking one more step towards my dream every yeah. every day and so i think that that's that's i think what is a big part of what keeps yeah. me motivated it keeps me doing the individual training every day and keeps me um you know have that perseverance and drive to try and try and mm -hmm. make it so yeah yeah it's a, it's an interesting, interesting one, but yeah, and it, it's it's again, it's very much being and like like you just said it, uh, it's about enjoyment of where you're at, um, and you know, for even just hearing because I had heard about Noah coming out here, even if he uh, didn't have you know the best experience in terms of enjoyment, uh, it's good that he went and decided to do what's best for him and absolutely you know, do something that he likes because um, I genuinely think there's no time in. Uh, especially these years when you're young to really feel like you know to, to not enjoy what you're doing and yeah. it's always important to get yourself in a situation where you can enjoy it and you know if you're not in a good situation trying to find the best ways and the lessons out of it because yeah. um, I just definitely think that a big factor of you know the, this time in your life and um, I think life in general is being able to just enjoy the experience enjoy the, the experience and absolutely uh, yeah learn that maybe you didn't you didn't enjoy as much but um it's just it's really cool to me to just hear about somebody who you know hear your story uh and even hear any and even hear you know no story about just the fact of trying something that most people don't get have don't get to try um and you know putting it, it takes a lot of vulnerability it takes a lot of um you know uh confidence and courage to uh make that step and do what both you guys uh did and uh it, it's something that I think I, I'm, you know, I'm jealous of, I'm, I, I think it's just really cool that you guys have that opportunity, but um, I think that it, it, it is hard because uh, again, you're in Europe right now. You're the, the majority or the, your, your close family is in Chicago. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it, it's just, it's never an easy experience. Cause I mean, I, 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 and you see it all the time. It's not easy for some kids to come out three hours away from their family. Sure. So, just the confidence and the courage that you have to have to be able to do that um, is truly incredible. So I think uh, I speak Thanks. for everybody in saying that we wish you the best of luck um, and that we're really, I think just proud to see somebody from Whedon and uh, you know, out there doing what you're doing. So I appreciate that. That's, that's way too kind. I appreciate that so, so much. I, I'm you're, uh, I, I hate that type of stuff to be honest. I, I don't know how to act. It makes me so awkward. I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't thank you enough for the kind words. I mean, and although the other thing I'll say about Noah is that I, I, I respect what he did is, is, is so much as well. And I think that every time I spoke to, um, someone over here that uh, you know whether it's the family friends that we have real close to my grandma's uh, or my grandma or my cousin I think it's always a case of just saying that he gave it a go you know he, he yeah. would I think he can all he'll no one will ever be able to take that away from him that no, he yeah. tried you know he tried he gave it a go if it wasn't for him he made the change and I think that's that's the thing as as well is that it's been my mindset. I think it's been his as well. Um, I mean, he was always a damn good player too. Is that? It's not like anybody can take that away. Absolutely, from him. absolutely, yeah, yeah. I think you're so right there. I mean, it, 
I, I think he's he'll, he'll hopefully come on this at some point, but uh, to share yeah. his his story as well. But um, yeah, no, he absolutely is, and I think he's he kind of to be honest, he's he's two years or, yeah, he's two years. I, I can't believe I just tripped up on on it, how <laughs> how many years younger he was than me. But yeah, he's two years younger than me, and he kind of to be honest. Um, I don't want to say paved the way, but showed me a lot of things by coming over here first and kind of mm -hmm. was, it, you know, earlier, because what happened was when I came over in mid-December, my the rest of my family came over just for a couple weeks and stayed um, until kind of the end of the year. And then they went back home. And I can remember then, you know, my brother showing me things around the little area where my grandma lives and um, mm -hmm. just explaining the train system and the and the public transport system. And it's just... Yeah. It's good. It was excellent to have that, and I think it was impressive to me how much he learned, even mm -hmm. even in just the three months, even though he, you know, didn't enjoy it as much, even yeah. though he felt like it wasn't for him. I was impressed mm -hmm. with just the fact that he did that, and um, yeah, yeah. So a big a big shout out to to him. Um, yeah. Who knows if he's uh, if he's listening or not? But no, and I mean, I also, I mean. The other thing about sharing stories, I I, I want to extend it right back to you and say thank you very much for coming on. And and I'm I'll say what I said at the beginning, which is I can't say it enough to people is that I'm so grateful for any person who wants to come on my tiny little podcast and share anything, any story, oh, yeah. any any uh um anything that they they uh they want. I'm I'm mm -hmm. just so grateful, so thankful, so appreciative. Um and yeah I, d I don't know if you have anything anything else that you wanted to bring up i mean we can take it wherever yeah. you want or i think that i just want to have two things number one saying uh, once again thank you very much for having me on um it, it's been a great experience i've been you know really excited i was telling my roommate about this really excited to do this and we're equally as excited to have you on for ours um it'll be a really thank cool you. experience you're our first ever guest so oh excellent uh, okay for sure. us yeah it's, it's something new for us so we're gonna try and figure out how to get it going but yeah um, sure. we're really excited to have you on and just to hear your story and hear what your podcast is all about um, sure, because yeah. I definitely think your podcasts uh, have a lot of information that would be um, incredibly useful for not just college athletes but kids thinking about the college game just think Absolutely. people thinking about where to take their next step in soccer no matter where they're at they Absolutely. can take a lot of information from your podcast so um, just to be a part of that I'm really thankful for that yeah, um, no, I'm I'm really I just to reply to you. I think I'm really excited to be on and and I think it'll be the first first podcast appearance that I'll that I'll uh, I'll make. So I'm really excited for that. I'm really excited to to talk with you guys about whatever you have for me and it'll be interesting to kind of be on the, the other side, you know, kind yeah. of be in the in the in the guest chair uh because that's something that is that'll be new for me and uh um mm. another you know something that is uh is unknown but exciting at the same time so yeah absolutely yeah, um, yeah and i just want to I, I just want to throw in there real quick uh just a, a quick uh not really shout out but, but i i did like how you mentioned you know with noah how he paved the way for you and i have often thought about uh um you know it is weird because you know i i look at my siblings you know i look at my mom and dad the way they supported me but also the way, you know, my brother who's older, he really did sure. teach me to have the courage to do things that uh, nobody's done before you. You know, my brother was in the speech, he was the oldest and he did, you know, speech team, show choir, middle school, tried out for soccer, basketball, did track, did volleyball. Uh, he tried a lot of new things and really paved his own road for himself. And I really took that uh, courage from him. And I, I, it's a lot to learn from because I don't always have that courage the way he does. Um, and looking at my younger sister and looking at, the um, confidence she has um, at her age was something I never had. So um, I don't know. I just I, my sister's a badass. I don't know. She just <laughs> she knows exactly how she sticks to her guns. She sticks. She knows what, how she feels on what things, and she's just very um, uh, confident in who she is. Um, sure. So I take a lot from them, and I'd hope that from them they take from me. Just being happy uh, and you know enjoying where you're at, but. I think you can learn from a lot of the, you know, not only just your older siblings, your parents, but, you know, the younger siblings too, but just getting to know and um, learning off other people is a big uh, part of being a soccer player and being uh, an athlete. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's so many, there's, there's uh, bits and pieces that you can pick up from, from everyone. And I think you're, yeah, you're, you're so right there. And 
Um, I wanted to ask just quickly, maybe before we fit, we, we end is, um, what is your, what is your brother doing now? What, where is he at now? Uh, he's in, he works in DC for, uh, Senator Roy Blunt, uh, Missouri Senator. Um, wow. Okay. He, yeah. His job is, uh, from what I've gathered and I'm not the best person to ask about it, but pretty much any time the Senator goes on like the Senate floor needs, uh, I think I know a big part of my brother's job is if he needs a fact check or a report typed out and he says, Hey, I, Danny, I need this stat for when I'm on there. It needs to be right. And I need sources. My brother will find that. Wow. Whatever information. Yeah. He does a lot of stuff like that. He's uh, starting school at Georgetown uh, soon. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. So yeah, he's just out there doing that. He loves it. Um, definitely different than anything I'm doing, but uh, sure. every time we go visit him, it's uh, an incredible experience. He's met some really cool people doing uh, his job. I can imagine that's, that sounds amazing. That sounds like a, a really interesting, interesting position, a really interesting job. Um, yeah. and, and like you said, some, something that also, also probably offers him the opportunity to meet some, some incredibly uh, cool people uh, from around mm -hmm. the, uh, the country for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, so I just wanted to, add, to ask that quickly to before we end. Um, is there anything else, any kind of, um, any other advice, any other shout outs before we finish it off? Uh, shout out to any coach I've had in the past. Uh, first off, to get me where I'm at. Uh, shout out to, uh, you know, you and all the other We Normal South guys. We Normal sure, South South yeah. well. Uh, shout out to my teammates at UD. Uh, I'm sure a few guys, the, 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 a few of them will definitely watch this. Um, and, uh, you know, shout out to my family. Um, and just thank you very much for having me on. Uh, once again, uh, really excited to have you on this week. Uh, everybody, if you have the chance, check out Full 90 with the fellows, me and uh, Andrew Gilly, just talking about Prem, Champions League, Bundesliga, anything like that. But this week, uh, you'll be on our podcast. So it'll be a very interesting uh very, very interesting episode that we're all very excited about. Awesome, man. Yeah, thank you again. Thank you very much for being on. And I am extremely excited to be on on yours this week. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, interested to see where, where our conversation uh, goes in, in that. And once again, you can find um, Full 90 with the Fellows on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts, correct? Yep. Um, so yeah, not Spotify yet, but hopefully <laughs> coming soon. Working on that one. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, man. Again, um, if you're cool, we can leave it. Leave it there. Yeah. Thank you very much for having me on. Really yeah, appreciate it. No problem.